The toolbar in Flash Professional provides quick access to the essential tools when working within the application. This lesson provides an overview of the tools which are available. So here you see in Flash Professional CS6, I have a demo project open up. And this project is basically a quick animation where these walls come apart and some text comes flying in and then settles. So we're going to be using this to demonstrate some of the tools within Flash. So assuming that you're in the Essentials workspace, the toolbar itself is going to be over to the right. And in the toolbar are a number of different tools that are really, really useful. We've got, to begin with, the Selection tool, which allows us to select a variety of elements on the stage. So if I pull more elements out here, you can see I can select any of these text elements, these movie clip instances, or even this background shape right here. Directly underneath here, I have the sub selection tool. And this tool allows me to actually select various subparts of any of my objects. So in this case, I just selected a basic shape. And this shape has specific points on it that I can then manipulate with the sub selection tool. This next tool is the free transform tool. And using this tool, I can transform any of my objects. So for instance, I hover in the corner here and my cursor turns to a little rotate indicator. And using that, I can rotate this particular object. I can also do things like skew the object along any of the planes or scale my object. You'll notice that there's a little black rectangle down in the corner of this tool. That indicates there are other tools grouped in here. So I'm going to hold down my mouse button on that tool, and a little menu flies out in which I'm able to select additional tools. This one right here, the Gradient Transform tool, we can use this to select objects which have gradients as their fill, and then manipulate those gradients. So you can see here I'm actually shifting this particular gradient around. I'm scaling it. And I can also rotate it, all with this same tool. The next tool is the 3D Rotation tool. So if I go and click on one of these movie clip instances, we can see this 3D Rotation dialog appear. It's like in a little overlay. And using this, I can rotate around the X axis here along the y-axis, and also along the z-axis. Also within this grouping is the 3D Translation tool. This allows me to translate the object along these different axes. So here's y, and here's x. The next tool is a lasso tool, and this allows us to make oddly shaped selection areas, like so. We can use this to select objects that are close to one another. If we just want to select certain objects and not others, we can draw a path around them if we wish. The next tool is the pen tool, and this can be used just like any other pen tool in Adobe Illustrator or Photoshop or anything like that, basically allows us to draw out different objects, different paths, with this pen tool. We also have an Add Anchor Point tool to add anchor points to our path, a Delete Anchor Point tool, which allows us to remove those anchor points, and also a Convert Anchor Point tool that allows us to convert selected anchor points. Then we have the text tool, which allows us to select and modify any of our text fields. We can also create text fields using this tool by simply clicking or dragging and then, then typing out our text as we want. We have a line tool, which allows us to create straight lines 
and a number of tools for creating rectangles, ovals, rectangle primitives and oval primitives, and polystars. So the difference between a primitive and just a simple rectangle, for instance, is that after a rectangle primitive is created, we can actually make a lot more adjustments to the radius and so forth through the properties panel. But we can also use the regular rectangle tool as well. We then have the pencil tool, and the pencil tool allows us to draw freeform strokes. Right below that is the brush tool, and similar to the pencil tool, it allows us to create freeform fills. Within the brush tool is also the spray brush tool, and the spray brush tool allows us to select a specific movie clip symbol in our library. So I'm going to choose this left wall. And then we can go and actually spray out a design based on that movie clip symbol. So pretty interesting. We've also got the deco tool, which does some interesting things. We have drawing effects that we can choose from. So for instance, if I choose flower brush, I'm able to go in and spray out some flower decorations here. And you can see we can choose from a number of different properties for each of these tools. And we can adjust the options of these tools after we select them. They each have their own particular set of options. Directly under that, we have the bone and bind tools. And these are really interesting. They can be used to perform inverse kinematics on either shapes or groups of movie clip instances. So if I take this little rectangle tool here and create a rectangle, I'm actually able to use the bone tool to draw out a number of different segments or bones. And then I can use the selection tool in order to modify these bones. We have our paint bucket tool, which basically is going to change the color of a fill for us. It'll do what paint buckets do. And we have an ink bottle tool, which does the exact same thing for stroke. So paint bucket tool fills in fills, and an ink bottle tool is going to do the same thing for strokes. We have an eyedropper, which allows us to make selections from our, any color on our stage. So if I select from this rose petal, we can see that my fill color down here actually changes to that color, and I'm able to use it now. We also have an eraser tool for erasing fills, a hand tool for panning around our stage, a zoom tool for zooming into our stage if we want to, and then under here we simply have our stroke and fill color swatches. These provide us with some color pickers, so we can choose those right there. We can also set the default black and white if we wish. And we have a little toggle down here that swaps the colors for us. So we could swap the fill and the stroke color. Lastly, down at the bottom, we have enlarge and reduce. And that allows us to simply click on our stage using either of these tools to either zoom in or zoom out. So this has been an overview of the toolbar and some of the tools within Flash Professional CS6.